Hi, everyone. It's Cheryl Rothstein here, author of the Heaven Sent series. My book, Atonement, is out now. You can get it on Amazon or you can go to my website at jlrothstein.com. And I am with uh, Henry Nielsen today. Welcome to the show, Henry. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, I'm Henry Nielsen. Uh, I'm the author of Spice Trader. It's uh, my uh, first full uh, book, which is coming out, and it's available on Amazon and all the other ebook platforms as well. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm super excited to talk to you today about writing and the writing process. But first, tell everyone a little bit about Spice Trader. Um, so Spice Trader is a, a story. It started as as a science fiction story, and it developed into something that was far more character driven. Um, so it's a story of a group of friends who are really not uh, going very well in life. They're 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 very hedonistic, very full of full of drugs and partying, and don't really take much concern for the future. Um, and they discover a, or one of them finds a, a drug called spice, which is non-addictive, doesn't have any of the negative connotations that, that drugs usually have. Um, and they decide to start manufacturing it and trying to sell it to, to make money. Uh, but they find that um, simply taking the bad bits out of drugs doesn't take the bad bits out of the lifestyle. And there are a lot of negative connotations that happen just by trying to take by trying to keep your your life in that that sort of negative space oh very interesting so tell us a little bit about what sparks your creativity and what made you sort of come up with the idea for the book so for, for this book uh as i said i'm normally a, a science fiction writer uh and the things that really inspire me um, is uh, is technology and the way that we interact with technology. And basically, I'll, I'll think about something for a while and I'll, it'll get pushed into, and I'll push it and tease it out and I'll try to figure out how it becomes, how it could reach like a, the worst point end game almost. So, uh, for example, if you if you take something like, like Facebook, we're, we're probably seeing something like the worst case scenario for Facebook at the moment, to be honest. Um, yep. But <laughs> yeah, so I, it's a lot of um, thinking about uh, what what the the end uh, the worst point end game for technology could be, and whether or not that ends up being the the thing that is the story um, is uh, doesn't always happen. Uh, so in my first book, in my first story, um, Eleanor's Mind, it was definitely the driving point of the story yep. uh, but in Spice Traver it ended up taking a little bit backseat a bit of a backseat because I found the characters and the way that they interacted with the world so much more interesting as I was writing it yeah and did you do research into that into those areas or is this totally fictionalized um yeah so th there's a certain amount of research but I don't try to let it get too much in the way mm. um I've got a podcast as well, and uh, I actually and it involves GPS satellites. And I described how GPS satellites worked, and then I had someone message me on Reddit and go, "You got that completely wrong." I'm like, "Well, in my world, that's how they work." <laughs> so yeah, it's, I, I'm happy to get things wrong, and I'm happy to yeah. you know do my best guess and not let the the tech get get too much in the way of the good story. But uh, yeah, there's definitely times when it, I have a critical research failure. <laughs> Well, is always I feel like there's always somebody out there that's that's yeah. like that. That's sort of like, hey, that's wrong. And it's like, come on, you know, maybe it'll be that way in but five it's, years. It's more fun. It's more fun. <laughs> and it fits with my story. Wouldn't this yeah. make much more sense if this was how it works? So yeah. we were chit-chatting a little bit before we started the show and we we're talking about work and we we're talking about how draining that can be and how we have mm. other things going on besides just writing. So what keeps you motivated to keep writing with all of that other stuff going on, especially with a launch, the book just launched. And so now you're trying to market and you're trying to build yeah. a brand. So how do you keep motivated? Um, essentially the, well, in terms of actually writing the books, it's uh, I've got this little plugin for my Google docs where I write everything and it's just a, a writing habit tracker. And it just gives you a graph of how much you've written each day. And it says you, I'm not a very fast writer, so I only set it for like 600 words a day. You get a little graph, and if it's <laughs> above the line, I'm happy. Um, so so I, that's what I do generally. Um, but in terms of uh, like keeping motivated to keep actually like producing things, 
um, I find that it's it's more a fact of trying to keep um, my mind active. Like I, I've never been one to sort of sit down and watch, which watch much TV or yep. do a lot of passive things. Um, and I find that I'll flit about, but I'll always come back to trying to actually create something. And I, I really enjoy that process of creation anyway. So whether it's, you know, painting models or, or building things or, or writing, it's, it's quite nice to actually just um, be able to, to do that. And yeah, it's, it's not a, even necessarily a matter of being motivated. It's a matter of just deciding on a project and really just being able to see it through. Mm -hmm. So do you find that you have sort of ideas coming to you all the time, you know, like yeah. different ideas and you have to, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I, I, oh, I, I, I get so jealous whenever I see writers being like, oh, I'm just brimming with ideas all the time. I'll, and I'll be, <laughs> I'll be sitting at home just being like, I am a talentless hack. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll find I'll get a bunch of ideas um, yep. all at once and then I'll try to jam them into one story and it won't work. Um, so I've really got to pair back when I get a bunch of ideas and like save some of them for later or yeah. or have these things because like sometimes I'll just go be bereft for ages. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say I'm not really like that either. I yeah. I have interviewed a couple of people who are you know make the assumption that all writers are like that that there's just a, just the steady stream of ideas blasting through their brain at all times and I'm thinking not so much. I mean it's funny how it sort of happens for me. I'll, if I'm working out a problem or something like that, I might have a bunch of different ideas that come in when I'm doing something random, you know, when I'm out grocery shopping or when I wake up in the morning, I dreamt of something or something like that. And I can tell that that's my, you know, subconscious mind trying to like work through the issue that I'm dealing with in the chapter. But as far as like, just, oh, that would be an idea for a book. And oh, that would be a great idea for a book. Like that doesn't happen to me. So that is sort of mysterious when people talk about how they just, they're brimming with ideas and how those things just come into them. And I, and I agree with you. I'm a little bit a little bit jealous of, of that as well. How about your writing process in general? Do you, are you a planner? Are you, do you just fly by the seat of your pants? Like, how do you do that as far as the writing itself? Do you have an outline? Is everything plotted ahead of time? Or you just sit down and write. I, I, I don't outline. Um, what I do tend to do um, is I'll, I'll, I'll write uh, like a climax scene or the end of the book or something that's going to happen towards the end first. So um, Spice Trader, I knew exactly how it was going to end from the moment it started. Um, and then I, I'll go back. So I'll write it as a prologue and then usually I'll, I'll write it and then I'll start to be able to have a starting point of the story um, and I'll sort of slowly work towards it. Um, but at times that ends up really bad um, because <laughs> I'll go back I'll go, by the time I get to that, uh, by the time I get to that initial scene that I've written, yeah. I'll, I'll then like go up and copy and paste it. I'm like, that doesn't, that doesn't at all. <laughs> I've got four extra characters. They're not, they're in, they're in a hotel. They're not in a, you know, they're yep. not in a bar, you know, and it's just like, ah, oh. so it's, it's yeah. So, but in terms of my actual writing process, the, the first draft is very like, I don't even think when I'm, when I'm writing, I'll just do, 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 yeah. Um, just smash out, like I said, only about five or 600 words a day. Yeah. Um, uh, because more than that, and I get burnt out because as, as we were saying before, I yeah. work. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah, then the I think the bigger thing for me is the editing process. It's very much a hack and slash um, sort of. Delete. Now, editing process for you, or your you have an editor who does that to your work. Uh, so my set, so my edit that I do, my editing yeah. that I do before I send it to the editor is very sort of. It's I okay. was deleting. Pages. Yeah, and moving things around and yeah yeah, yeah. yeah coming <laughs> deleting back characters. into that idea yeah, yeah. deleting characters killing off your babies <laughs> <Yeah>. um <laughs> killing off your babies so what is it what was it like for you when you went through an actual editing process with an editor um so it was it was interesting it was um things that I'd sort of left in there because I'm like yeah, it's fine she came back and was just like 
so there was one scene there where there was a fight at a funeral and she's like this is not like this is not something where people do that people do like, <laughs> Uh, you, need to, you need to fix this and I went uh, yeah okay <laughs> um, but yeah it was, it's it was really good having someone that had no emotional investment in the story mm. looking yeah. at it um, yeah 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 I just I you know I, I've told the story before on on this show even too is that I hadn't done it before. I hadn't gone through it before. And it took a long time to get the draft to a place where I felt comfortable sending it to an editor. And I thought intellectually, you know, I understand this whole editing process. Like I, I get it. They're going to look at it. They're going to tell me all these things that need to be improved. And I want that. And I want to get better. And I know it's not perfect, but when it happens, Oh, it's just like a sucker punch. It's like, yeah. like for me, I mean, she was like, you can't end here. She's like, you can't, you have to change the ending. And I was like, oh my God. Like I remember getting the the draft and seeing all like the red lines and just like shutting the computer and like going to the, <laughs> the fridge and getting like wine. And my husband was like, it was that bad. And I was like, I'm not sure. I just opened it. And I just saw all these red lines and I wasn't, I wasn't completely sure. So I think for I think a lot of people who are watching who maybe aren't writers or they're just writers for the first time that's that's sort of a frightening prospect yeah. to actually send it out to somebody but I highly recommend it because yeah. there will be things that you won't see and there will be things that just won't be right that you're that you're not going to want that to be the first thing someone reads that yeah. has your name on it. Yeah. The other thing that I I'd, I'd say to people that are trying like to, to start writing and stuff. And I see it all the time. I'm, I'm quite active on Reddit um, and the, the writing subreddit there. People will be like asking permission about how to write their book. And it's like, you can't, you've, you've got to write, yeah. you've just got to, it's like the oldest thing, like you just got to sit down and write the thing and you can go back and fix it later. Like yeah. I, when I got Spice Trader back from my editor, it had two and a half thousand suggestions in the Microsoft yeah. Word suggestion tracker. And it's just like that, you know, that's everything. That was like little punctuation mistakes, that yeah, spelling yeah. mistakes. That was also so. And this was after I'd done two rounds of editing on it myself. Like it takes a long time to to sift through it and turn it into a good story. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, if you're sitting down, you go, oh, should my character have brown hair or blonde hair, or and like, should it, should he be an anti-villain? Should I have more female characters? Like, just put it down because when you read it when you read through it later, it makes so much more sense and the answers come to you afterwards. Yeah, so you're not, and part of that for, for you is that you're not, you know, outlining and deeply plotting and doing a, a character sketches and, and all mm. of that type of stuff. And obviously people write differently and, and feel differently about it. But I think for me, when I talk to new writers, I'm like, just finish it. Like just mm. get it yeah. on paper and finish it and then move on and write something else and finish that. It's all about keep going because it's you're not going to get this 100 percent right on the first time even if you have an editor even if you have you know arcs and they all think it's you know and you get a review out of it it's just mm -hmm. it's one of these things where if you're starting out you're starting on a total journey like it's it's not something that's going to end next week or end when you you put the book out and if that's your expectation or if you're waiting for some sort of validation after the first book it's most likely not going to come happen. Yeah. it's yeah. just not going to happen right it's yeah. just not going to happen so um for spice trader what is that still considered for you sci-fi or is that like a thriller or is that like, what would that genre be i i'd call it a thriller more more than okay. a sci-fi there's there's still a little bit of the original sci-fi sort of smattering in there um but it's it's very much more thriller um <laughs> So would, did you like that aspect of it, like writing in multiple genres, or do you feel like, no, I'm, yeah. I'm going to come back to, I'm going to come back to my sci-fi roots, so to speak? Um, I, I'm going to, my, my next work is going to be a sci-fi, um, and I, I do, I do consider myself broadly a science fiction author, Yeah. Um, but I, I did enjoy the fact that, uh, like, it just started being a lot more, more character driven, um, and yeah setting driven that so I was happy to just follow it along really um yeah it's just always interesting when I talk to authors some of them just don't write up around or outside of 
their genre. So it's always interesting when I talk to authors who are willing to make that jump or try it or just write what comes to them, not thinking yeah. about, well, what genre is this or what, wh who's the audience for this until after the story is, yeah. is written. And I mean, I think that's the real benefit of self-publishing to a certain extent. Um, is like if I'd gone to one of the self-published, the, the publishing houses like Tor or something like that with this and said, hey, I'm a sci-fi author, but this isn't sci-fi. Um, <laughs> but like, hey, oh, you want this. You, <laughs> you want this because my next one will be. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't um, work like that. Yeah, yeah. Although and I do you want are you on that track that you're looking to get with a regular publishing house? Or are you happy to self-publish and continue on that track? I have no idea. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't got it. Um, you don't plan anything, Henry. Come on. There's no track of <laughs> this. There's no outline. This is a hobby. I don't want. I don't want to. Um, so I'll, I there is one story that I think I really, really do want to get traditionally published. Um, okay. I think, and but a lot of the stuff that I do, as I said, it's. Uh, a lot of fun for a yeah. start um, and uh, I, I quite like self-publishing as well so it's it's sort of like I might try some to get traditionally published yeah it's, it's always good. an interesting question you know I talk to a lot of different yeah. authors and they feel very different about it you know I talk to some people and that's they're constantly trying you know they're yeah. they're constantly trying to get to get uh, into the publishing realm to get an agent to get um, one mm -hmm. of the big publishing houses here in the, in the States or even an indie publisher. Um, and it's a lot of work, you know, querying yeah. and um, there's a lot of hurry up and wait, you know, in that world where even if you are picked up, uh, you may, you could conceivably write a whole other book or two in between the time it would take for that one to actually come out. Um, but it's very interesting. Some people just, that's where they want to go that's and that's the what they want and that's the goal. And for other people, it's sort of like, I thought maybe I wanted that, but now that I self-published, I'm happy with that track and I'm happy with the, the convenience of it and the fact that you own the timeline for yeah. what's happening. I mean, the thing, the thing that, the one thing that I don't like about self-publishing, um, I'm going to give a bit of a shout out to uh, some friends of mine who do this show called The Burncast. Mm -hmm. um, and they basically go onto the Kindle self-publishing store and they find books that just people haven't put any effort into. Like I've, they've got ones that are literally just copied and pasted from blogs online <laughs> and there's heaps of them up there. And it's just oh, like, yeah. it's just that really low quality, like just trying to steal a quick buck. And there's that slight association with that, with self-publishing that I yeah. really don't like. Um, but there are like yourself, I've seen a heap of people on Twitter that really put a lot of effort into their books. And it's like, yeah, it's not like it's a, it's a lower form of the, of the, publishing process well I think you're probably the first person that's been honest about it and I've talked about it a little bit but you have to be you know you try to be I try to be positive I try to be positive on Twitter I try to do what yeah. I can to help other people out but to be honest I remember when Kindle uh, and I've got a lot of gray hairs up here I remember when Kindle <laughs> first came out and people wouldn't read it people yeah. wouldn't read the self-published work because it had such a it had such a bad reputation because with all of the, you know, all the boundaries down, <laughs> everything came out onto the market. And it was, yeah. and I remember reading this one recently, I remember reading this one story and I wish I could remember who it was by, but he was joking about it where he wrote like, I don't know, a chapter of nonsense about something. And then he took a picture of like his foot and he put it as the cover art for the book. And then he called like two or three of his friends and was like, you have to go out there and buy that book right now and give it five, five stars. And his friends were like, okay. And like, they just went and did it and they bought yeah. it and they gave him five stars. And his point was, you really can put nothing out there. Like yeah. you really can put junk out there, like true junk. And yeah. until there's some way to weed that, truly weed it out, you know, mm. it's always going to have a little bit of a knock on the reputation yeah. because people are going to feel like, well, you know, it's a risk, right? I'm, yeah. I'm risking. And until you get beyond that, it's going to be hard for authors to come up to actually make some money on these things. I mean, it's the whole reason why most people only want to pay 99 cents for it because there's the sense of I'm not getting a real author's work here, yeah, exactly. you exactly. know, as opposed to you would never expect to pay 99 cents 
or a dollar 99 or 4.99 in a bookstore you know if you yes. walked in and picked up a book you wouldn't have that expectation in a bookstore but you're also expecting the stuff in the bookstore to have really been through many filters and yes. so it does still have a little bit of a negative reputation i think it's gotten better i think yes people in communities like what's out on Twitter and doing sort of these things and, and talking to people, it, it has gotten better, but there is still a lot. I mean, I've never read as much self-published work as I have since putting my yeah. book out and, and getting out onto Twitter and trying to help out the, the indie author community. And there is junk out there. I have read stuff that if I didn't know that person or if I had picked that up on my own, I would maybe didn't finish it maybe wouldn't yeah. have gotten through it. So it's still out there. It's um, it's just interesting. Some people feel yeah. a little bit defensive about it, but I think it's true. I think there's still yeah. a lot of, of junk out there. How are you finding your audience? Because for me, and we were saying this a little bit before the show, is that it's been one of my biggest frustrations. You know, I can describe my book. I can tell you what it's about. You can see the cover. You can read the back cover. You can kind of get a good sense of it. It went to an editor. It's a professional cover artist you know, but I can't find my audience directly. Right. And yes. now I feel like the barriers to publication are down on for Kindle in particular, but you have this new barrier where you have these book bloggers and these book blog tourists and these book reviewers. And I feel like they're the new barrier that has inserted themselves, especially in the indie world to try to say, Oh no, I've read this for you. And it really isn't junk. And yeah. are you finding that to be the case? Are you able to find your audience? Are you struggling with that? Uh, I think I'm struggling to a certain extent. Um, it's it's also like, so um, I've had a few people pick up my books through talking to them on Reddit, but it seems to be very like all my, there, there hasn't been like a ground swelling at all. It's been very much like, uh, you're, you need to, um, uh, you know, I'll talk, talk to them directly for a while and they'll go, oh, I just yeah. picked up your book, by the way, yeah. which is yeah. fine. It's just, a, it's a very time intensive way of, yeah. of selling yeah. individual books. Um, in terms of actually getting my name out there, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's very much a learning process. It's uh, trying to find people willing to review it, people trying to find, um, sending out advanced review copies and all that sort of thing. It's, there seems yeah. to be constantly changing rules about how that happens and all that sort of thing. So it's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's interesting. It's, it's not easy, but yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's an interesting world. And I, I feel like it's probably the biggest frustration for most of the authors that I talk to is just, Oh, I, I know if I got the person that read this, you know, they would like my book. Right. Yeah. But it's like, I don't know where the audience of those people are. You know, um, I don't know where they're all sitting or, or what yeah. they're all reading or, or where they're all hanging out, um, learning about books, but it, it is a, a source of frustration. And, and we were talking a little bit about the show and I just think that maybe it's really time, right? Like you yeah. said, you're engaging with an audience. They're getting to know you as a person, which I hope that shows like this help with also, right? That they see your face, they know you're an actual person behind the keyboard, that this is what your book is about. And they get to know a little bit about you um, and, and what you've got going on. And then they hopefully engage. And then from there you build up sort of a following slowly over time. So unfortunately, I think it's another hurry up and wait game, um, yeah. even with getting to know getting to know your audience. But, but uh, you know, hey, you'll just keep writing in between, right? That's, exactly. that's, that's what will happen. So to wrap up the show here, tell the audience what is next for you. Uh, right. So as I said before, I've, I've got a podcast. Uh, it's called Sunward Sky. It's available uh, at all good po podcast distributors <laughs> everywhere. Um, uh, it's, so it's a story of um, a woman named Alyssa who is going and working on a spaceship to repair satellites, which apparently don't work the way I think they work. Um, uh, and uh, she, there's a conspiracy among the shipmates because uh, basically in the future, uh, space travel is, is not something that people want to do because there's a lot of health issues and that sort of stuff around it. So yeah. basically it's become a menial minimum wage, horrible job to have. Uh, and there's, there's a conspiracy to make it so people don't have to go into space anymore. Um, among the crewmates uh, and she uncovers that so the first season of that is now out um, I finished it uh, a couple of months ago and then I took a break from writing because I'd just done 
Eleanor's Light and Spice Trader and this all in very quick succession. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I've started storyboarding the second season of that, which will be the final season. And then that will be released as a book after I've edited it and turned it into something more book-like rather than episodic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the other one that I'm working on is uh, a new, very much cyberpunk science fiction novel. Um, and at the moment, to be honest, I'm just reading a lot of uh, cyberpunk science fiction to get get an idea of some some <laughs> settings and things like that. Because I was writing a little bit of it, and I was just like, "This is very white room." Uh, yep. <laughs> writing at the moment, so yep. Just so you're getting some inspiration by reading in the genre, which is always always welcome and the podcast is fascinating to me so obviously you're getting back to your your roots and and sci-fi and that so how many episodes is it uh so it's 10 episodes and a preview episode out uh at the moment um and And you wrote you wrote all that you wrote all that and you you read it and recorded it for people yeah yeah okay uh so yeah it was basically it started as a writing exercise because uh i was trying to and it was released weekly and the episodes are about 4,000 words. And that's normally a bit more than I, I write each week. So mm-hmm. it was just a bit of a challenge to yeah. get something that was half decent uh, and put it out each week. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I wasn't it, sure it, if that was like a collaboration you did with somebody else or if you no, did that whole thing from beginning to end yourself. Yeah, it's lit- literally just just myself um, reading basically the story. Yeah. It's an audio fiction sort of format. So... Yeah. Um, and so it's a lot of fun. It's it's very stressful, especially with work. When, I was going to say, just... I would be so, I would be so, I don't know how you did that. You're so brave, like to do <laughs> your work and put uh, it in. And then, and did you have to learn the whole skill set of, you know, cutting the tape and like fixing like whatever you recorded or like recording over it? Did you have to become a little mini expert at that or uh, you sort of so just I'll... wing it? I actually worked as a sound engineer for quite some time. Uh, okay. So I've got, I've, I have a bit of experience with that, yep. but it was the first time that I've actually sat down and like read uh, to yeah. myself and I'm not good at that. Uh, <laughs> there's an awful lot of, uh, in the, in the cutting room floor, there's an awful lot of, <laughs> Alyssa, Alyssa walked down the aisle and <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Well, I bet you're good at it now. I mean, <laughs> yeah, just, I mean a lot it's like, it now. Is, it's anything like anything else to do I mean the first couple of shows I did yeah. this I was a mess and yeah. now I'm just kind of like whatever yeah we're just yeah. hanging out in my living room talking about writing like that's that's how it feels but it's the first time you do it is yeah. totally nerve-wracking and yeah. I remember I said to said to my husband after I did the first time I'm like well I sounded like a, a mini mouse had a cold like my my voice went up like an extra octave and it yep. was like cracking a little bit and like I was yep. frog like 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 Minnie Mouse frog voice that is how it sounded the first time and I was like that it, you know and they always tell you to practice and everything and I was like I did all that like I but it didn't matter it was the first yep. time you do it it you're kind of a mess um at doing it so now you would be you would be a near expert now after 10 10 episodes so yeah that, that sounds super fun I just need to get better at uh not writing the whole thing on a tuesday night um <laughs> <laughs> yes you'll have to work on that whole planning thing i think Henry. I, know you don't, I know you don't want to but i think you have to work on that planning thing a little bit yeah probably probably <laughs> Well, thank you so much for doing this. This is such great fun. I hope everybody goes and checks out Spice Trader and checks out your Reddit and check you got the cover going on there. It looks beautiful. <laughs> um, and obviously follow you on Twitter. You can come out and, and, and find him on Twitter. Or you can find me who's following him on Twitter. So you can follow all that. And I'll drop the links below the video as well. So thanks so much for doing this. And thanks everybody for tuning in and have a great night. Yeah, thank Bye. you very much for having me. Bye everyone.